The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism for the repentance of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, typically when we read scripture, we, we look at the major issues that are there, the major themes that are there, and, and sometimes we miss the little phrases that come along in the words. So we've heard the John the Baptist material a number of times, twice at least during Advent, and we're quite familiar with the craziness in the wilderness. And then we've also heard the story of Jesus' baptism, how the dove descends upon him, and we'll focus on that later. But I wanna draw your attention to the verse that comes between those. And Jesus comes from Nazareth of Galilee and is baptized by John in the Jordan. Now, you could say, well, that's just a directional piece. That's just a, a word of information that says this is where Jesus comes to and where Jesus goes. But what you don't realize is that from Nazareth in Galilee to where John was baptizing in the Jordan is about a two-week walk. It's quite a trek. Nazareth is in the hill country, about halfway between the, the, the Sea of Galilee and the Mediterranean Sea, up on a mountain ridge. And Jesus would have to have come down from that hill on a road that had been traveled by many others. He would have headed to the Sea of Galilee, and then he'd gone around to the sea, and then he would wander through the Jordan Valley, a rather lush green valley. It would have been a wonderful place to walk, but it still would have been quite a distance to travel. And Jesus would have had a lot of time to think a lot of time to ponder about what was going on as he was doing this. Sometimes I think Jesus must have reflected upon what was drawing him to this place. Oh, you say, well, he knew that he was the son of God, but the scriptures are, are somewhat hesitant to sort of assign Jesus this, this idea that he just knows everything that's gonna happen. So I, I think that Jesus had a lot of thinking to do. He had a pretty good life in, in Nazareth. He was working for his dad's shop, a carpenter, maybe taken over after his dad died. He probably had a business there. He had family, had friends. He, he was well known. We, we know when he returns home, some of them are happy to see him, some not so much. So Jesus had a lot of time to think, think about what was coming ahead, what was driving him, what was pulling him to this place where John the baptizer was. Now John had a fabulous ministry going on, almost like a Jewish revival, if you want to say that. He had people coming from all over to, to hear him proclaim the word. Uh, the Jewish people were always interested in, in when a prophet came along and, and God could speak through them. And so the people from Jerusalem and from Judea and obviously Jesus from Galilee is coming down. And they're all gathered in this place. And John is proclaiming this, this word of renewal and repentance. He's calling people to turn from their old ways and to, to look for something new. Jesus knows all that, and, and John's fame continues. As we know in the Gospels, John encounter, Jesus encounters some of John's disciples, people who come to Jesus and had been part of John's community and asked him questions about his ministry that they were gonna report back to John. We know that some of Jesus' disciples had been John's disciples. The Gospel of John tells us that. And the truth is that some of John's disciples continue to proclaim this message, this Johannian experience, beyond the death of John and beyond the death and resurrection of Jesus. We know that because when Paul arrives in Ephesus, he meets people who have been baptized into John's baptism, and they were rather surprised that there was something else, that the Spirit was available to them. So Jesus comes to this place, a place where John has a significant ministry, but a ministry that John himself knows is time-bound. It is intended to prepare for the ministry which Jesus will exhibit in Galilee. For Jesus is the one to whom John is directing our attention. Jesus is the one that John knows will complete and fulfill the 
the promises, the expectations of God for humanity. Jesus is the one who is God in the flesh, living among us, empowering us. And when Jesus comes and gets in line with all the other people to experience the baptism that John has for us, which is for the remission of sins, and we say, well, what about Jesus? Well, because Jesus is the remission of our sins, but Jesus comes and he enters fully into our human experience, even baptism. And then the confirmation for Jesus comes. The confirmation of the things he had suspected were true. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The voice from heaven, the sign from heaven in the form of the dove, confirmed the reality that Jesus is the anointed one of God, the one who is to come to set God's people free, to liberate us into a new reality, to embody the agenda of God. And the Spirit poured upon Jesus at that moment, then drives him through the wilderness to begin the work that God had intended for him from the foundation of the world. Jesus' identity, his person, is affirmed here, and his ministry begins at his baptism. His ministry of, of the agenda of God into the world begins when God calls him, claims him, identifies fully with him, the one whom he already sent, but now for all of us to hear. This is the inception of Jesus' work. It's a new beginning for Jesus. And he has plenty to do, and he will quickly do it in the Gospel of Mark, as we'll discover. And we'll hear how Jesus begins to bring that word over the next couple of weeks and throughout this year as the Gospel of Mark is, is read for us week in and week out. What's really interesting is that the early Christian community understood that this baptismal experience was not just for Jesus, but was the way that each person who comes into the Christian faith also gets named and claimed by God. It is the moment at which an individual is identified as the son or daughter of the Most High God. It is when God declares to every person who comes through those waters, that you're a beloved son, a beloved daughter, that you belong to the one who has created the world, and that God's spirit dwells in each of us. It is our beginning, the beginning of our ministry, our work on God's behalf, our participation in the divine agenda for the sake of the whole world. This is our beginning. And it is terrifying to think about it. It is an overwhelming responsibility, and it would be nigh unto impossible if it were simply up to us. But it isn't just up to us. God gifts us with the Holy Spirit, which guides us and directs us and, and stirs us so that we might do what God wants us to do. And God gifts us with community, with other brothers and sisters who have also been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and also have the Spirit in them. This is not a Lone Ranger event. We're in this together. And ultimately, God gifts us with the reality that God is going before us. Jesus says that again and again to the disciples as he ascends back to the Father. I am going before you, which means that wherever we go, Jesus is already there. So as Jesus walked from Nazareth to Galilee and pondered what his future might be, as you and I begin new opportunities, as we begin ministries or work changes or other situations in which new things happen, we too might ponder about what that all entails, the newness, the strangeness, the uniqueness. But we ponder it, knowing who we are and whose we are through our baptism into the Lord Jesus.